Hello there. So this is a, as I'm calling it, scroll through on one of my Instructables, which is essentially an online guide of how to make stuff. So if you haven't been to Instructables.com, it's absolutely incredible. Go check it out and you'll be able to navigate to uh, my specific page, which is Hey Jude. So one of the projects I wanted to talk about was uh, making this a rocket playset, although it could be anything from a garage to a fire station to a princess castle, doesn't matter what. What I wanted to do was basically show that this was made from old grocery boxes and using very, very simple tools. I think the most expensive thing here really is a bit of a fancy glue gun, which I got, which is cordless, but you can pick those up for the equivalent of £10 or 10 bucks. So really, other than using a good sharp craft knife, there's nothing here that's really limiting uh, in terms of technical uh, tools. So one of the other things I feel we could get into a big debate about whether the world needs more plastic play sets, which ultimately have a very, very short lifetime. Um, and I think you can get into a debate about this with is cardboard, you know, a, a more appropriate use of resources. I think there's probably some argument in that, but I think overwhelmingly the argument is actually that uh, I feel in going through this process, which I, th I hope is useful to design students and maybe some early stage uh, design professionals, is that instead of just giving lip service to the design process, this wasn't a rocket that I designed for my my toddler, gave it to him and hoped he liked it. This was something where we designed a little bit of it and he got to play with it and he gave suggestions. So a great case in point is uh, if you scroll down here further, there's, there's actually a little garden in the rocket and I didn't come up with that. That was my son's suggestion going, can we have a garden and can we have a kitchen and a lab and things like this and what color is it? And you can see him painting it here. And I think that's a lot of the reason I'm quite excited about this project is because it, it, it really does live and breathe the design process. That you design something and you iterate, you build it, you test it, in this case with the end user, which is my son. But I, I feel this is such a nice project that I hope uh, parents, but also anyone, could be any member of the family or friends of the family, um, could have a go at. And I think this this extends to other parts of uh, design thinking as well. So I hope it's useful. And as I said, do check out um, Instructables. One of the benefits of me doing, as I'm calling it, a scroll through um, is that you're not going to get hit by the adverts unless you've created something. So hopefully it's a little bit cleaner as well. As you can see, we started off with just grocery boxes and taking them home, which again, I think is half of the experience of taking, finding the resources, things don't just magically arrive from Amazon, um, and actually then getting to sort of that grips of what, what are the physical properties of the material. So safe to say, my son's sat in many a boxes, be it, you know, spaceships, boats, or whatever, and so this was something that he was really excited about. So all this blurb pretty much goes into what I've just said, and uh, any fans can recognize Wallace and Gromit was a bit of an inspiration for my son in terms of the orange rocket. So um, yeah, here we go. I thought I'd also start out by saying why making a working lift matters. So what you'll notice in the, in the rocket um, is that it, it's one of those nice things where the, 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 the container can go up and down and I thought it was one of those things where a lot of the time um, instructions and, and books that you buy where they're perforated you have to sort of take out these pre-designed things and I remember doing these as a kid and I, I felt in many ways quite constrained by this and so I'm actually a huge advocate of saying you design around the thing you actually want to interact with and in this case to put it in simple terms I didn't design a list a lift on paper I designed a lift to work around, as you can see, the little spaceman that we had and also a car, as those were the two things that my son wanted to elevate up and down um, in whatever we were going to build. And so I, I think that's one of those sort of things to take on board in the prototyping process is that start with the most complicated bit. So in this case, I wanted a lift inside a rocket and I knew that I was going to build everything off that size and scale and functionality. So um, again, I've mentioned previous projects. If you haven't done this, this is a bit more complicated. Do consider starting with the cardboard uh, bus, which is a, a bit easier to get going with. So other little tips and tricks. 
Um, <clears throat> if you want to make a lift, safe to say any toddler is going to treat it with a fair bit of abuse, which is just them learning the constraints of the system. So I suggested things like reinforcing it uh, with a little bit of a, a lollipop stick so that the string didn't in time slice through the top of a cardboard, which is pretty inevitable. Um, from experience. So again, this is just good quality uh, cord, but you could use any of these, uh, you know, synthetic nylon strings as well, as long as it's woven and quite strong. Um, you don't want to use that butcher's twine that will fray and wear out. So again, this was the sort of thing about saying working backwards from the desired dimensions. I built the lift carriage based on the spaceman. I then proceeded to build the lift shaft based on the carriage, if that makes sense. So as you can see, these are the four walls of the, of the carriage, and also I'm anticipating what I think the, the floor levels are gonna be. So going through it, you can see that, you know, obviously these things, you could get into the millimeter precision, or essentially one of the benefits of designing things to fit is that you realize that you just want a couple of millimeters either side and so you draw that in and cut it out. And I think it's a much better way and avoids a lot of quite quite strenuous calculations that you might have to do if you were working in CAD, for example. And so again, this was, this was me trying to sort of practice what I preach and show that you really don't have to sit there with, you know, digital calipers getting it precise. You can throw this together quite quickly just using the dimensions themselves. So as you can see before I glued everything together, I sort of checked that there was a nice loose fit and then glued everything together so the carriage moved freely. Similarly again, drawing in the doors, this is just, you know, everyone has their preferences, but I tend to prefer to build boxes and then use a craft knife to stab through rather than always laying everything on table and hoping that it assembles nicely and doesn't buckle. Because you can appreciate when you cut out this doorway four times, that piece of cardboard will become very flimsy, whereas conversely, when it's already glued in place, it's quite taut and you, you, you've got a good structure to cut through. So, the winding mechanism, uh, again, nothing very complicated here, really just found a, a strong little bit of plastic. I've, I've often used uh, old sort of biro pens, plastic pens that have run out of ink. Um, anything could be used for this axis, and it's really just about creating a little, a little spinning lever to winch it up. And again, this was sort of my philosophy, if you will, <laughs> humble as it is, um, of testing and testing again. So let's say the first weekend we built this, this lift carriage, which was a little bit more detailed. And then I was just really observing my son playing with it and seeing whether his fingers could get to grips with the, the, the complexity, the friction. Did he put something in too heavy and it crashed to the ground? Or could he even winch it up? Um, even subtleties like leaving a bit of slack in the string, because what I found was that he would winch it all the way down and then suddenly it would start going up again because there was no slack in the string. So just little things like that. I, I love finding out about being close to you know, my, my son, the end user, if you will, and paying attention to those details which do actually matter. So again, finding that it started off with spaceman and cars and then suddenly became all about the chicken. Again, it's just thinking, how can I, how can I build that into an experience as well? So um, again, designing, now that we have the lift shaft, as you can see on the left of the screen, um, designing the rocket to work around it. And again, this was really just, as you can see, I have not done anything very precise. It was just sketching what I felt looked rockety and rough pencil lines until I thought, yeah, that looks kind of good. And then as you can appreciate, I was realizing that they wanted levels for these lifts to stop at and then just measuring that distance. And then that became the, 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 the uh, radius of the circles. So as you can see again, not worrying about the fins at first, getting everything to work by cutting out these sections, gluing them in place lightly, checking that it looked good and made sense uh, with my son, and then building on the fins and, and indeed the sort of nose cone shapes. And I think it's worth, it's worth pointing out that sometimes when you're building things, you don't always have to have a, a sort of guaranteed shape. It's sometimes enough just to suggest it. As, as you can see here, the transition um, between the top of the nose cone is actually quite fine even if you don't put those in. It still looks very rockety, as you can see here. No one would not think it's a rocket, as it were. So I think, again, you don't have to be completely high fidelity or perfectionist about this. 
at the end of the day this is entirely about the process of, of working through with your kids um, and enjoying that together. So reinforcements again, uh, you, I, I could have taken a very engineering approach and said oh well I, I'm going to anticipate and over engineer the fins but this was a little bit of just seeing how much my, my son interacted with it and safe to say he did bosh it on the floor as he was flying it around and one of the fins definitely took a bit of a crumple and I thought yep yeah, let's double up on the thickness but again uh, just a nice tip here that rather than putting layers and layers and layers and layers of cardboard which is of course even if we're saying it's a virtuous recycling material I still think it's good to be frugal with the cardboard and so hollowing out the cores um, it's just a really good technique and actually if you've ever lived in any cheap uh, houses as I have the doors are quite often honeycombed with cardboard and have two thin bits of wood on the outside so again this is all good economies for a reason um, again I think some of the things that often looks a little bit deceptive on uh, you know dare I say it the sort of Instagraminess of things which is a necessity if you want people to click through but again the detail on me doing these steps they really weren't premeditated I just got some long strips and just freestyled them by cutting the top one a bit there measured the next one bop 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 just put them in sequence and so I think I didn't spend a lot of time wondering about where the edge of the step was going to end because it really didn't matter if you've ever seen your, your kids or someone else's kids playing with a little uh, a little man they really don't laboriously move the legs like a stop-motion animation they boing it up the stairs and so for me it's really a, an evocative or a suggestion of a stairs which is critical and again it just means you can have some fun of it of that actually I realized the stairs weren't gonna make it so I decided to just run them a little bit MCS or style around the actual um, the rocket fin which of course aerodynamically not viable but completely viable for you and your kid and I think he loved he's, he's always loved spiral staircases and things like this so it's just something that evolved in the process um, and I think I think always have a bit of fun with that just see what your kid suggests and when they're at that age where they're not encumbered by thinking that's not technically uh, you know, real life. I think that's the great thing that you can have with uh, with these experiences. So anyway, um, adding the ramp as well. Um, this was really just about sort of looking at the sort of technicalities of making a little drawbridge. I guess I was stealing a little bit of sort of close encounters from the, uh, you know, and the whole ramp coming down. Bit of a classic in ET as well. Um, but I just think I know my son from previous models. He loves things where you can put something at the top and it slides down, be it a car, be it a little figurine or whatever. So I wanted him to sort of consider the mechanism to lower a ramp. And to be honest, this could be anything. It could be more complex. It could be less complex. There really are no rules on this. Um, but either way, got the job done with a little, you know, another little piece of plastic and it basically just folds it out. And as you can see, it flipping down there quite nicely. So again, testing it again. It was by no means finished. I just wanted to see how my son interacted with this. Um, and again, whether there was any pinch points, whether some bits were too close and his fingers couldn't get in or something had locked. Those are just always really great things to do before you start painting it because obviously it's different. You can't chop bits out so easily then. So again, this again was really more sort of a testament to the freestyling, um, just using some admittedly quite fancy toilet tubes. These were from a company called Bamboo. Um, and uh, yeah, slightly overkill on the toilet tubes, but nonetheless for modeling, they're exceptionally good, but this would work with anything. Um, and again, I think most parents know that kids love pushing things inside tubes and seeing it come out the end. There's always a bit of suspense and jeopardy in that. So this one falls down and out and onto the ramp. And I was just showing a few ways of working with uh, the toilet tubes in that way. So um, again, just using other shapes and forms, putting in that, that reality and detail. It, it, it's, it's genuinely the case that this was very much a dialogue with my son of going, well, what else is the spaceman or space woman going to need? And it became a you know discussion of, well, you know, they want to have beds and they want to have a toilet and they maybe they want to jump through some holes in the floor and they want windows. And then, of course, you know, got into discussions about engines and fire and all that sort of stuff. So this is 
really just saying you could make anything, but it really doesn't need to be sort of high fidelity. Um, th those aren't obviously beds until the child has decided that they're going to be beds, and they are. So I think that's one of the lovely things. And in many ways, I'd say there's a knack. Um, you see this with so many toy designers that actually the, the suggestion of something is often much more powerful and sustaining the play for longer than being very, very detailed. Um, there are, of course, cases where detail is great, but actually if something is a seat and it's kind of vague, it means it could be a toilet, it could be a mission control seat, it could be a jetpack seat, it could be anything. And so I think sometimes getting that balance right, and you'll only know that through working through with your kids, um, or indeed a number of kids to sort of get a demographic if you're looking at it as a design project. So, um, again, this is sort of just fancy bits and a nice little cardboard technique. It, it kind of goes without saying it's kind of obvious in hindsight, but if you cut it so that the, the fluting, which is the little holes, goes in that direction, uh, it'll be quite hard to bend. Whereas if you make it so that they're all pointing up, it can actually fold it on itself quite nicely. And so you can see that in action here. And it just means that they're easy to sort of fan round uh, the corners. And again, it, it does have a benefit of being structural, but it just adds a nice little embellishment, um, should we say. And I think that's sometimes that it, it, it's very easy for the Picasso quote of kids just being given endless rain is great. But actually, it's nice when sometimes the adult part steps in and goes, I'll do this bit of detail because it gives a bit of rigidity and stability. And also, you know, when you're flying your thing around, it stops all the toys falling off it quite so easily. So again, sometimes that balance between doing exactly what your kid suggests and knowing a little better is sometimes a really great combination. So here we go. And I kind of thought that's enough detail. Uh, we both seemed very happy with it. It's all ready to get painting. Um, and so, yeah. Here it is, and I think a little subtlety I'm sure most people know is that uh, if you put PVA glue and mix it with your cheap acrylic paints, which needn't be fancy, um, then it just gives it a slightly tougher finish. And uh, actually what I ended up doing was undercoating everything in grey um, and then doing the orange as well. And that just gave it a really nice sort of stopped the cardboard being quite so obvious because let's face it, your kids don't paint to millimeter accuracy. Um, so I think that's just a really nice way to go about it. And there we go. And what was really nice about this is that again, just seeing seeing my son interact with it and give things descriptions and meaning, you could see the stories were starting to come together of going to the garden and then going to the kitchen to cook it and then oh no we're going to send a message uh, from the radar tower all those sorts of things I think are just really lovely to engage and it becomes you know so far I'm writing this from you know quite a few months on from having uh, built it and lived with it is that I just think it's such a nice thing to, to see those stories evolve um, in a play set where he's had so much influence on the on the physicality and the story for its creation. So yeah, a little note on just colours, sometimes picking out some edges and details. It not only helps it look a little bit cooler, but it's one of those things you notice in design that, you know, using colour for specific function is also really powerful. So, um, just that was basically it. Go have fun with it. As you can see from the gallery, it gets used in all sorts of different ways. And uh, if you have any other questions, please either email me through my website or post some comments on the Instructables page. So thanks so much and hope this is useful.